All right, everybody, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take this PDF that we created for our tiny home in our previous video and get this ready to be a PDF that will be printable on the large format printer that we have available in the lab. Be sure to start this video after you have opened up all of the files, specifically your drawing, and double check to make sure that your drawing tab has all the necessary information with your name, tiny home, and green architecture in the lower right-hand corner. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the word file, and silly enough, you're actually going to choose print. Once your print dialog box comes up, you're going to choose Adobe PDF. We can't physically print it from our Chromebooks through the AWS, but we can get it set up to be the correct size. So I'm going to choose first printer name Adobe PDF. Don't hit OK yet because it's not quite ready. Next thing I need to do is choose Setup. When I choose Setup, a um, printer setup box will show up. Now what I need to do is change the size of my paper, which defaults to letter, to the size paper that we chose. Hopefully you chose your title block size D paper. Then you'll know that you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna choose Arc D size paper. I'm gonna click on that Arc D size paper. Then it's super duper important I click on the word zoom and be sure it's zoom to 100%. That means when my printer prints it out, it will print out exactly the size that it is on your computer screen. Don't choose fit to page because then it won't be to the right scale. The next thing I want you to do is choose center. We don't want to offset it from a corner. We want to just center it right inside our paper placement. So our title block is pretty looking. Um, so let's review. I'm on my printer, Adobe PDF. I went to my size and it's Arc D size paper. The only other two settings I have to first set is my zoom at 100%. And then I just have to go up a spot and center it. Those are super important. You don't need to change anything else. Those four things. I'm going to click on OK. Next thing I need to do is I should just have to click on OK. This warning will always come up. Just click on Close. It is not an issue. This, however, is an issue. So I'm going to click on OK. What it's saying is it's saying, hey, you haven't gone into Adobe Acrobat for a while, which is our PDF um, creation place. So I actually have to go in and sign into my Adobe account. So I'm going to click on OK. Because I've recently saved here, I should be all right. Um, and it says you're not going to actually be able to start printing. I know that, so I'm going to click on OK. Now, in my AWS, I need to get into my Adobe account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my four squares in the top corner of my AWS screen, and I'm going to open up Acrobat. We did this towards the beginning of the quarter when we were getting into Illustrator. So this process should look a teeny bit familiar. Um, right here, it just says, hey, you're not signed in. So I need to sign in. I'm going to click on that sign in box and it should bring me right to my Adobe sign in process. Do not, I repeat, do not click on continue with Google. In this email address box, type in your full email address, your school one, not a personal email address, and then click on continue. Now sometimes it brings us to a couple of different locations. Oops. I did not type my email address in correct, but it knew because I had at ISC 728, it knew where to bring me. Yay. So I can try that again. I typed my name wrong. All right. So I typed that in. I'm going to type in my password and I'm going to click on go. And now this will show up for many of you. It's saying, hey, you're already using this on a couple of other um, items. Do you want to sign out? The answer is, yeah, you do. You're going to want to sign out on both. I don't want to sign on on this one, so I'm not going to click on that one, but I am going to click on sign out here. And then I'm going to click on continue. And I'm going to click on continue. All right. 
And no, I do not need a tour, so I'm going to close that out. All right, so let's head back over to our Revit. I'm going to go to those four squares. I'm going to go to my Revit. And it is sometimes like a computer and sometimes not. So it's saying, hey, um, you actually left Revit. This is why we should have saved before we left Revit. Hopefully you did. And it's opening up Revit again from scratch. So Revit loaded and my file wasn't open, but thankfully it's showing up here in my models under my tiny home, so I can just open that up. And now I'm gonna try that print process again. I know that it didn't work correctly. I know that it didn't end up in my Google Drive like I wanted it to, because I was never brought to my Google Drive. So I have to do those steps again. This sometimes happens and we just have to be patient. Mm. And yes, I do want to continue to open this file. I wonder if this is, I'm going to click on cancel. I wonder if that's maybe the cause of some of your, of your issues with not being able to save. Okay, let's see here. Let's continue on. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to print because I really don't need to save anything right now. And I'm gonna go back to that Adobe PDF and I'm gonna go back to my setup and I'm gonna choose my Arc D, not ANSI, Arc D, Zoom 100%, Center, okay. Now I'm gonna click on okay and I'm gonna click on close. Now, if I did this correctly, a new box should show up saying, hey, where do you want to put this PDF? So what I'm going to do is double click on this PC on the side. I'm going to go to my Google Drive and I'm going to go to my drive. I can do that in the center part as well. Now we've been putting everything into the same quarter folder and I'm going to put it into that quarter folder for this class. Let's try that again. There we go. And I want to put that into the AWS folder. And I love that it put my file name in as tiny home. If it doesn't, update that. And another good idea after tiny home would be to add your name because when I go to download these to my computer, it really helps if I know who this file belongs to by putting your name in the file. And now I'm gonna click on save. All right, so it's loading right now. And now what I want to do is check my work. It's so important to check your work. So where I am is my drive. I just had that open in another tab. I'm going to go to my fourth quarter. I'm going to go into my AWS. And it's not quite there yet, but it was actually still thinking. So let's hop back over. Yep, and it's still saving. And it's saying, hey, do you want to open this file? No, nope, I don't need to, but I think it might anyways. Bam, look at that, it worked. It opened it in um, in Adobe Acrobat. And now, most important, did it actually show up in my drive where I told it to go? Because this is where I need to go to find it to turn it in. And boom, there it is, it's a PDF. And here's the magic, this is why we do that PDF process. When I double click on this as a PDF and it's in my Google Drive, I can actually see it. If I go to my Revit file, I can't. It's asking me to download it. But if I actually go in and look at my PDF, I can view this. Now you're gonna be turning in two files. I need you to turn in this PDF file, but I also need you to turn in your Revit file as well. So here's my tiny home Revit file. Please notice, students, that I have these Revit files with numbers on them. Those are actually all of the files I've ever saved for my tiny home. My best tiny home project is my one with the best, most recent last modified 
date on it. That's why we're viewing our Google Drives as a list view and not as a grid view. I've been asking you to do that for most of the quarter. In our list view, we can see that this is my best version. This is not. This is an older version. Not sure where that one came from. This is my best version. So this will be the one I turn in on Schoology. And this PDF will be the one that I turn in on Schoology.